I am doing a 30 minute session. This is gonna be distance energy healing and psychic wisdom to help a client. I'll read the goals here. I just wanna thank the client so much for the opportunity to connect with you. Thank you so much for sharing. I really like these pictures of yours. And I can't wait to see what comes up about these pictures. <laughs> I will show you guys in just a minute here. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. You can also check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, so first your goals, and then I'll show some pictures. So you say, hi, Abby Normal. I don't know what to ask for. I'm not thinking clearly. I got so happy when you talked about the Holy Spirit and inner child. Amazing. I thought the light puffs I drew maybe represented prayers or faith. Thank you for your kindness. All right. I like, I like that you're not thinking clearly. <laughs> okay, now that I love the, I love spiritual metaphysical drawings. Like you're literally pulling in an intuition here. Like you're sensing something out and you put it on paper and it means something, right? It's already speaking. It's really cool. And then we have this, more hands, more energy. I love this stuff. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, this is very, it's like got symbols and different dimensions. I mean, this is just me kind of reflecting on what it means to me. It looks like people, perhaps, and different, it kind of makes me think of dimensions, just like a human being kind of looking at things, meteor and a planet. Um, this is lots of different um, information, maybe time, people. Um, so I'm really curious to see what comes up here. You're presenting all of this for a reason, right? I'm going to set this here. Okay. All right, I'm going to relax now. You were also referencing Holy Spirit and inner child too. Just looking at the photos here, just the images that you drew in my mind. Oh, wow. I feel like I'm in a very peculiar place. There's, okay, so it's a dark environment feels like an ancient type of environment, like it holds the mysteries or the keys of the universe. But it, it's like it's made out of dust. Even the night sky is made out of dust. And the ground, it, it's all kind of barren looking. But there's, there's a sense of a deep um, respect in my heart. I feel like a sense of like hushed silence when I stand here. I experience this place. Almost like my breath is taken away by this place. There's not much really to see. It's quite barren. I mean, there's just rock and night sky with no stars in it. And the sensation of dust, but also the sensation of time, like ancient time. And holding the mysteries. I'm a man. <laughs> I feel like... I, this is literally what's coming to me. I feel like a Luke Skywalker type, a Jedi. Um, I have a cloak. I have a sense of the force. That's the best kind of language I could define it as because I just feel a sense of some kind of cosmic. Um, I'm tapped into something cosmic. There's a cosmic awareness here. The fact that I'm wearing this cloak, I, it's just, I mean, there's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing um, rich or... Um, you know, special about the material. It's pretty um, basic. It's like something you might see Luke Skywalker wearing. I still... Hmm. <sighs> come, I, I just say come out with it already. Just come out with it already. And I turn this person around. 
I'm not them anymore. I'm more like myself now here. I'm in this place and I'm present and I'm saying, just come out with it already, turning this person around. And they have no face. But what is in place of their face is like these moving um, kind of pixelated um, greenish colored dots. They're like green and silver uh, metallic dots. <laughs> like in, in where the face would be. And I say, stop hiding. Come out with it and stop hiding. But you can't translate. You can't translate. You can't um, create clarity. It's interesting because you were saying that. I mean, there's a depth here to what you're saying. It's not like, uh, today I just don't feel clear. You're actually tapping into something like a real thread in the infinite universe, okay? So... I'm watching because I, I have to decipher how to make this clear, okay? And what it would actually look like if it was clear. Would it be still the speckling going on? It's kind of a light movements of metallic light, green and silvery light. And then would it look like just a face, maybe a mask? Would it look like nothing? It just wouldn't have the light there. Like, what's it supposed to look like when things are clear? Like, maybe this is what clear looks like. Like, we've decided that, no, that's not clear because I can't decipher it into any kind of logical thought. But what if this is clear? And what if this is what clear looks like? And my guides say, well, then why are you demanding that um, you stop hiding and come out with it? So now we have this conflict. There's an expectation of you. There's an expectation to decipher and give a, a firm and clear sort of representation of what you, you have decided now must be scrambled. So something inside yourself is creating this in order to, you could say, protect yourself from what then would be growing. Oh man, I'll tell you what, there's so much, um, so many levels here. <sighs> I feel like that, uh, okay, you, it, this makes me think of Jenga. I feel like this Jenga puzzle uh, slash game it actually comes to me that it is more of a puzzle than a game. But we have fun playing it as a game, but it, it represents a, a, like a cosmic puzzle for some reason. And I see that the Jenga of yourself, um, I need to re-sort uh, the cosmic puzzle of yourself. So I need to take blocks out without this toppling over. But it seems so easy in the energy world because um, I just tell it what to do. <laughs> it's like, stay. I was like, stop time. Okay, good. <laughs> then I'm rearranging things. But you, you aren't adapting to this change. You aren't adapting to it. And there's something... Um, in my nature that is frustrated with you. And maybe you are frustrated with yourself, um, but I, I'm surprised by how aggressive, I feel kind of aggressive and pushy, like impatient, you know? And it's like, I just rearranged your Jenga puzzle. Um, come on now, we, we're talking about this. We gotta get this straight. And you're not adapting to it. You're not digesting it. You're not becoming um, one with it. So, let me continue to watch. Okay, you are on this, in this location for a reason. In this location specifically because basically the alchemy of time and the energy of this space, the, all the energetic ingredients of this space are essential for what your needs are. 
And so that's, that's important for me to acknowledge that you are in the right place at the right time, okay? That's like an alchemy. Like these are, these are the ingredients, the medicine, energy medicines that you require in order to achieve this adaptation. And we're talking about like an energy thing here. This is an energy adaptation. This is a de development of your like totality, okay? Here and then integrating it here on earth and all this other stuff that's going on as energy adaptations that we go through. So, okay, I need, okay, so I'm going to separate the aggression because that, that just seems um, really loud. It seems um, overly high expectation, overly, so I'm just taking that energy consciousness. And um, so I represent this like aggressive kind of like frustrated, um, you know, so I'm taking that energy and I'm just uh, silencing it and putting it over there. So that way we can um, figure out the next step here. And I don't have to hear that sound. You, you look strange. As soon as that aggressive energy disappears, you're not scrambled anymore. And you, you are maybe, I don't know, five feet tall at most. I mean, I'm just like, whoa, you got really short all of a sudden. And your complexion is, I mean, what color would that be? I guess you could say a purpley brown, more brown, but it has some purple in it. But it, it, it's, it's, um, it's like darker around, like going out in around the face and then more brown towards the center, but it never really is quite purple. It's more like brownish purple and then just kind of brown in here and it's like more of a light brown. But your face is really uh, complicated to my mind. It's hard to understand what it, your face is like. I'm even trying to uh, depict maybe there's an animal that might represent. You have the skin of what would be like an elephant. Um, that's kind of what, but no, it's slicker than that. It's more like a um, seal, like a seal. But you seem to be, you're definitely a person. You're not like an animal creature. You're, you're a person. There's something strange about your nose. It's almost like it, it definitely has a, it, it's raised. It seems to have three nostrils. There's also something strange about your eyes because it, it seems to me like you have multiple eyes going across this way. And I can't understand your lips or your mouth because it, seem, it seems to be raised slightly as well. Why is there so much aggressive energy attacking you? There's another one coming. So I'm literally taking that energy and then putting that one over here. Okay, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. I'm just going to bring in the full force of this energy because this energy is really loud it's going to get in the way of your energy adaptation and it's really it's making you feel small okay even if you are small in the scene it's it's like the type of energy that make anybody feel small all right so it's ugliness it's just energetic ugliness that's coming out it's bitterness it's 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 just um barfing it all out on you there's a lot of this coming around. There's a lot of this. You're not afraid of it. You just stand there. Your eyes start to become, they, weren't, they were just pitch black. But now they're starting to glow from the inside and they look like lava. And your hands actually start to transform into like lava hands. They start to glow like bright orange color of lava. And I feel like there's a representation of fire in these hands. Perhaps that's what you're trying to manifest with your drawings. You're picking up on something like this. You seem to be able to pu pull a lot of heat from inside yourself and then put it into your skin. And I see it coming through your eyes and coming through your hands. Like it's, your eyes are literally gl glowing like a demon, you know, it would be glowing. But it, you're not a demon. You're just a being. And you're using this... I'm still making sense of it. I can't, I'm trying to be you so I can look at what's on the other side. Again, the echo of like a Jedi Knight, the echo of like a, you're aware of the force, you're using the force. 
I'm just listening right now. I, okay, here I am again. Again on the outside now. And I'm telling you that you need... You're avoiding something. You're hiding from something. Even if you're facing all of this energy, there's something you're not doing. There's something that is going to keep pestering you until you figure out what this is inside yourself. Unfortunately, in the scene, I represent one who has to kill you. And I, I just go straight for the basically what I would define as your heart. I mean, I assume it's your heart. There's a lot of energy that pulls here in the center, and I just stab right into that energy pooling right there. And I watch you die, and there's something of relief that I feel when you die, and I actually see the light of your spirit leave your body. And there's a sense of achievement. I can't understand these energy beings. This energy consciousness? It's almost like a water like an ocean wave and it starts with just one thought or one um one being that doesn't represent a being and then it starts to collect okay it starts to collect and collect and collect and now it's like an ocean wave imagine if you could sense um energy that collects into collective consciousness that the collective conscious doesn't represent having like a physical body like we have but actually is just like energy tides of energy and it starts to pool and collect and it is a it is um directed at you it is following you it is seeking you out it is wanting to end you it really is um, wanting to end you, and it does end you. You chose this location for a reason. You chose this specific location. You chose the, the timing of the event. You chose the energy of the event. You decided, you actually divinely timed it yourself in some way. One thing that you knew in the depths of your being was that once the end came, once this tide would come and take your life, that the tide would actually find, would have to sort of linger in, it would, it would define it as an achievement, but it would be a hollow achievement. And it, then it would linger in a state of like a hollow suspension. And you knew that the only way for this tide to um, turn in a new direction was for it to endure a um, a time of, of a hollow, stale um, eternity. You hoped that it would not come to this, but it, it was kind of the only way, is what it feels like to me. You had to be wise enough to be complete with all of that. And there's definitely incarnate forms that are way um, more advanced at being complete with things. You actually had a, a sense of, of feeling like you were going to die and having to come to peace with your death. You weren't like a being that was um, didn't have that kind of uh, relationship with death built into their, their being. Like we have a survival state. Us humans have survival states. This being had um, something of that kind too that, that takes great courage. It took great courage, even um, great courage to have the expanded awareness that you had developed to make the choices that you made, to represent what you represented. And you were in that, in that form, in that life, uh, what we would describe as like a Jedi master, like a Luke Skywalker type. This uh, tide is still alive, by the way. That concerns your soul. You seem to know about it. You don't, you, you are already telling me that you don't have the ability to work with a fire like you once did. I just start laughing hysterically. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah? Like, I'm just laughing hysterically. I'm like, so? I don't know. I'm just like, I don't know why. I was just doing that. Okay, I'm just laughing, and I'm just like, yeah, so, whatever, what, what's wrong with that? Like, you can live without the fire, like, you can be fine with that. It's like, it's kind of like um, our mentality, our translation of what we once had, and now we no longer have it. We don't realize what we do have, like, so what, you know? In that lifetime, you had that. In this lifetime, you have something else, like, let's find out what that is, you know? And 
like, don't feel like there's a loss going on here, but there's so much gain. Like, man, do not underestimate this human form, you know? Okay, this tide. Okay. I wonder, I, I feel like you're lot. The reason why you would have ever said that you were lacking clarity, the reason why you would have sent those those drawings to me is is because something is si silently speaking inside yourself that you can't you can't put your finger on it because it would be really hard to put your finger on that even for me i was like okay what are we looking at here what is this you know i have to slowly piece it together and translate it and make meaning of it but there's some kind of energy <sighs> there's a communication i have to do there's some kind of energy adaptation I've got to do. And so I'm still listening, okay? Okay. I mean, I really have to listen here. I'm ask asking my own soul. So like, okay, so what, what is the concern about the tide? Like, it's infinite time. There's going to be... Um, there's going to be stories like this. There's going to be times like these. We have to face this energy. And I was like, <laughs> nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So there's no reason to ever be afraid of it. Because it hasn't learned yet. It still hasn't learned yet. Even in all that hollow eternity, what it did was instead of realizing that there was an opportunity to uh, its own adaptation, for it to adapt to a new sense of self, what it, it learned from within, 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 within the hollow. And it found something inside the hollow that, that it, it de deciphered as love. And so it became basically darker. I don't know why I like teasing you, but for some reason, I'm just like, see, look what happened. You thought you knew everything, and then what? it got darker. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay. Because I because it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> because we would think it would be. It's not. Because we're working with all of time here. We all go through infinite phases of transformation. Like, I'm still listening. Okay, so I'm supposed to emphasize this is okay. I'm supposed to tell your soul that you you made so many profound decisions in that lifetime. You were an inspiration. Not only that, you were courageous. You were absolutely courageous. And what you had to accept and what you felt was loss um, is wow, like pff, rippling for all time, the meaning. And this will come full circle as you had seen it. In our version of present day time, I hear the sound of it and it is only sort of, it went inside itself, it kind of like imploded and exploded at the same time and into a darker phase, okay? And that's okay. Your soul just needed to know this stuff and you need to be at peace with that. That's, I, I'm supposed to tell you that. Look, the obvious next question I think anybody would ask is what is it up to? Like, what's it, like where does it exist? Is it part of earth? What is it up to? I'm told that, um, okay, how do I explain this? This tide, I do not feel that this tide is up impacting our planet, believe it or not. I, everything is impacting everything, so therefore, yes, on some level it is. Even if your soul knows about it through you and your memory of it, yes, it already is just through you alone. So everything is always impacting everything. But I feel that there has been... Some kind of barricade for this is not seeping into our astral, for instance. It's not seeping in like other um, tides of consciousness I've come across. That, that, that we might think that this was one of those. It's actually kind of um, shielded off. I don't feel that it has direct contact. It might have indirect through memory and stuff, but it doesn't have direct contact. It doesn't even have vengeance towards you. It is um, completely at the heart of itself and it is um, tuned into the, its own heart's guidance, believe it or not. Even dark, twisted things have a heart's guidance, believe it or not. I am seeing uh, more time passing. 
and what ends up happening in the long run because there's no inner there's no exchanges with this this thing still lives kind of trapped in a um, in a space that's quite large. I mean, it's very, 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 very large. It surprised me how much space there is where this thing is in it with no contact. And that's part of the timeline for it. Because while it found something in the hollow, I see that it's getting smaller. The, the tide is getting smaller and it is actually um, receding. It's like it's drying up unexpectedly. This is still in process, by the way. That makes you sad to hear that because you saw such better things for this. You saw such beautiful things for this tide of energy, for these, this consciousness. That you couldn't help, you couldn't help guide it into what it was not meant to be. It was meant to be dried up until it's almost like when it dries up, it becomes completely inactive, but don't uh, be so sure. What it could be doing, in a way, going through a meditative state, through infinite time, and traversing dimensions, okay? Until its consciousness can be born elsewhere and then continue the self-discovery journey. That's literally how it goes. That, that concerns you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, you, you found great courage, you faced this thing, it ended your life, you it lived in the hollow, became darker, now it's, you, you see in time it ends up drying up, and then it goes into a meditative state, and I see it move through dimensional walls, and then it is reborn, it takes a very long time for it to rediscover itself. You don't want this, until this thing understands love, you don't want it to go anywhere. You want to keep it in its corner, so to speak. But that's not God's plan for it. You're going to have to be okay with God's plan. This is really bothering you. This is actually in your heart. This is really bothering you. That's why I keep teasing you about it. Because it, you're letting it bother you, and you don't have to. But your soul deeply knows about this, and you're reflecting on it deep down inside. And I think that it, it might be hard to translate this one, even for me, and I'm really having to listen here to, to really translate what the energies sound like, and where the harmony is at, and where the fear is at, and the insecurities, in order for us to get a bigger picture about this. Okay, let's focus on you for a second. I mean, I, you need to know all of that, but let's see where you're at now. Because you really, you, okay, the word ad adapt, which is a word I don't often use. I usually use the word evolve or ascend, but the word adapt is the w specific word that I feel called to use. And y y it's time for you to adapt. And, I, and it's like, it's time for this thing to adapt, right? You want this thing to adapt, but you need to adapt. You're ready to adapt to the next thing as well. I'm, I'm asked to really move your attention from this memory, from this exchange, because this really was deep for your soul. It's still there. And I'm moving your attention and I'm kind of focusing it back on what, what we're trying to accomplish here. For you is this adaptation. It's literally the word I'm supposed to use. It's about you now. It's about you now. I don't feel like you're going to cross paths with this for a very long time. And that could be like a billion freaking years. And it might even be the, it might come full circle in the way you always hoped it did. So let's just let this thing go on its own learning journey. We're done with this thing. We're complete with this thing. And I'm saying, are you complete with this thing? Can you just love yourself for what you discovered, what you explored, how you explored it, who you were? what you taught the universe through your life experience? And can you be proud of yourself and strong in yourself? You know, um, you're, you want to show me something else about you because this you now wants to talk to a different version of yourself from that lifetime now is you in this lifetime. <laughs> and so you actually look lizard-like now. And it, you're... It's interesting because I'm starting to question what is your actual form here? And I don't believe your form actually has per se a density. I feel like it's more of a hologram 
a hologram, a projection of some kind that can change it, its appearance at will. But you're still a hologram and it's more like you're a spirit energy, but you can have a density. You weren't a, a reptilian shapeshifter. You were a hologram. That would be the only way I could describe it. You basically were an orb of light or, or, or something like this that was able to create the manifestation of physical representations of yourself. So how would you be ended? That's why it was like, it didn't seem like I stabbed you in the heart. It seemed like I stabbed you in an energy portal, like an energy that was filtering through the center of you. And then once that went in there, it was like, that's when I saw the light um, leave and move on. And as this tide, I felt like, I had achieved my goal, which then was then a hollowness, right? And a new sense of love. It was darker, only get dried up, etc. Oh yeah, you you know <laughs> you're doing it. You're doing it. You actually are feeling more at ease, more understanding, more complete, more. I get it now. You're um, circulating that energy right now. Oh, and that's what that was about. Is to I needed to tell you that was was what your form was. You needed to know that that part of you needed you to know that about your form. It's important detail. It's some something about um, the clarity is you to understand yourself. You to understand yourself as. Um, things that you've done in other lifetimes, like what you your your expression was in the universe, um, just to give you a link to that memory, because it was still unresolved in your soul, but it's feeling so much better now. And that was the adaptation to heal. That was the adaptation, because now that you feel whole, oh my God, you're gonna feel like a you're gonna feel like you came through like dimensional pathways and doorways, like 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 oh my god here i am oh yep yeah, that's me you know you're gonna feel like that i keep seeing um really ripe oranges and they're super juicy and tasty and you're actually picking one right off the tree and you're um peeling it and you're like like the biggest orange bite and the juice is just like going everywhere and you're just really hungry for oranges, I guess. Because <laughs> you're just like, ow, ow. <laughs> and there's like, like, wow, you're really hungry for oranges, I guess. <laughs> and so you're doing that. Oh, yeah, you're feeding your heart. You're feeding your soul. You're starving. You're starving. And what I see is a really, like, ripe orange. It represents fresh fruit. Um also represents energetically fresh energy. You're starving for fresh energy, fresh, healthy, um, rejuvenating energy. You're starving for it. Like you don't even care how sticky and juicy and it gets all over your clothes. You don't even care. You're starving for it. Hmm. I give you a really big hug and I say, wow, you're amazing. You're amazing. I say you want to play Jenga. <laughs> you want to play some cosmic Jenga with me. <laughs> you want to like solve the puzzle. <laughs> hmm. You smile and you it's to remind you of what we're achieving. Was uh, it's like to rebuild your structure and, and the energy world is to make you feel like um, you have fresh energies to work with because you you're moving energies through your form in a new way and it's going to be a lot more complete com like a sense of completion as it is just like electrically moving through your form in a new way like a new program a new route it's like driving in the same circle again and again and again and now we moved the circle and you're still driving in a circle but it's like totally new scenery totally new space and it's like, oh man, lots of new things to see and to discover and to, to find out about fresh air, um, new sense of sky and land. And um, it just feels like a fresh new sense of balance and place and you. Yeah, that's what I'm meant to share. 
did you know it was going to go there? There's no way you could have conceived of that. Even for me, I was like, okay, I'm loving these drawings. These drawings are making sense to me. Whoa, where am I? What is this dust world? What is this like? Who, wait, who's so aggressive here? Like, wow, what a crazy path that was. That was a really cool lifetime. Just let that, just let that soak in. You're gonna feel like a brand new person. Thank you so much for this experience. I'm really glad I got to share this with everybody today. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, go book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Again, you can visit me at Patreon as well at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, have a great day, everybody.